Morning ladies and germs. This episode we're going to go over some of the fabrication techniques that I use to, uh, to make circuit boards. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use the uh, toner transfer method. I'm also going to go over how to use the dry film technique uh, using ultraviolet, trans uh, ultraviolet light and using transparencies. So that'll be fun and I'll show you some of the secrets that I've learned along the way. And so stay tuned, you just might learn something. Well, the first thing we're going to need for the uh, transparency is the, the acetate. Uh, you can use transparencies for the uh, overhead projectors. Uh, you can use those, you just have to double them up. Uh, let's see, one secret that I like to do uh, before putting it uh, just to keep it uh, stuck. I like to use our old friend dihydrogen monoxide. It sounds pretty bad. It's just water. All right. So I just put a spray of water in there. Surface tension holds the two pieces of plastic very tightly together using surface tension. Is how flush uh, this stays. So. I don't know if you can see this, but it's it's lifting a little bit here. So what you'd want to do is you want to kind of bend it very lightly, because when you attach two different types of uh, two plastics together like this, you want to make sure you have the same curvature. Uh, okay. So that's something to look out for. Uh, you can just simply use Scotch tape to once it's aligned. When you're doing your artwork, you want to have an alignment. I like to use two different corners, two opposite corners. That helps me out with alignment. Verify that your corners are lined up, because that's kind of critical, right? Especially if you're doing something with, you know, something that that requires a high precision or a high resolution um, uh, transfer. You need a, a red light bulb, you know. You're gonna need that. That's your that's your safe light. Uh, some ultraviolet lights, uh, some ultraviolet materials, the the, uh, the masks, some of them require a yellow light. All right, I have the uh, the drill set up here. I got a 2.54 millimeter uh, uh, chip breaker bit in the uh, in the chuck here. That's a 1 8 inch shaft. Got my safety glasses here, and I have my clad board. So let's take a slice out of this and get that prepped up so that we can take our, our, uh, our initial cut here. Breaking the edges. Take a quick measurement. That'll be fine. All right. So here's our blank. Next step. Just taking your prep board here, and we're going to uh, we're going to get it prepped up so that the mask will adhere to the uh, to the board properly. Okay. Uh, I like to use these these Brillo pads here from the store. Look at cheap ones, dollar store ones. These are what I get. This is it. Okay, dollar store. Uh, let's see. I like to use coffee filters. They're cheap as well. I use this so I don't touch the, uh, the board anymore. From this point on, I don't touch the board with my fingers. Well, not directly. And we're just going to polish it up. You can see here. All right. Step after this is to actually clean it. I use rubbing alcohol. 
Uh, this is 91%. And we're just going to clean the board. And you can see how dirty that comes out. You see that? that all that's got to come off. All of that's got to come off. That'll trip you up. All right. Uh, one way to test to see if your board is clean is to actually put a drop of water on it. And if it, it should. But yeah, you want to make sure that your, your, your surface doesn't spot. You want it to, you want the, the water to coat the, uh, the material. You want it to do that. If not, it's not clean. And it won't take properly. Same thing if you were like, say, if you were anodizing aluminum. You would clean the aluminum so that uh, it will take. And you want it to, like, glide. It's almost like gliding. You want it to just coat the top of it. It shouldn't ball up. Okay? This is ready to go. I'm going to uh, see. I got the red light on, as you can see. Next step is turning the lights out and getting the material out. I'm going to make a quick cut. Some standard scissors. Uh, we're going to need an iron. I use a typical household iron. Uh, this is the F210 Type 1. I have it on setting 2 with uh, no moisture. Uh, this has never been used for anything other than this, so I know that there's no moisture in it, but that's the setting you should have it on. Alright, so let's let that warm up, and we'll be right back with the lights out. It comes in a roll, like so. Looks like this. I'm going to try to work real fast because I don't, I don't know if the, uh, the camera is going to output any kind of bad light for me. So I'm just going to put this just like this. Just like that. You really want to work fast with this at all times anyway, just in case. We're going to need two pieces of tape, one piece like that. I like to put it on the edge of the table, just like this. I don't know if you can see that, just so I can have them ready to go. And you put one on one corner, like that, and the other on the other side, and you peel off one side of the protective coating. squirt of water and you'll see how nice and easy that goes nice and flush with the board and that was a uh, that was a trial and error technique I normally don't share that but uh but here we go so I got my iron it's warmed up okay and we're just gonna go real quick with it you could use a laminator, that'll be fine. I want to concentrate on edges. You don't want to dwell on the board too long because it will overheat and melt. Yeah, we're in good shape now. It's nice, I like that. Okay, so we're good on that. Now we line up our, our artwork. Excuse me, I might have to get my head in there. I'm gonna line this up just right. Another squirt of water. Make sure your artwork is 
set up so that you can read it, okay? And you want to print out the negative. Uh, material happens to need uh, eight inches of depth uh, between the board and the light source at five minutes. And so we're going to do that. We're going to do that right now and start. Get this set up. Let me fall down. And there we go. And uh, try not to touch it because right now it's already too late. Okay, turn the lights off. And we're back to, uh, I'm going to flip this over so it doesn't affect it. And uh, let's see. Uh, there's some techniques where I've heard that you can, you know, you cover it up. And you let it sit and let it cook for a half an hour. Uh, I found that I don't need to do that. Uh, not with the material that I use. Anyway, so you probably can't see too much of this, but you can see there is something there. And uh, from my eye, this looks absolutely spot on perfect piece of tape. Cross your fingers. And ever, ever so gently, we're just going to pull back. Here, I'll turn the lights on for you here. We're going to pull this back. And just like that, folks, perfect. All right, so here it is here. It's absolutely perfect. Uh, now it's time to develop it. I use a mixture of distilled water and uh, sodium carbonate. Not sodium bicarbonate, sodium carbonate. I'm gonna use a toothbrush and I'm just gonna, before I start going crazy with it, I'm just going to agitate it a little bit just by lifting it up. You can you see the ripple? This should actually be done under um, under um, a safe light. But this is a pretty strong developer so it shouldn't take too long and it shouldn't hurt it. Yeah, it's not as perfect as I thought it was. How do you like that? It's nothing we can't handle. There's a way to fix that too. All right, so you get the idea. I'll show you the results, okay? All right. Let's see what we got here. It's very slimy. It always feels slimy. Let's see. Come on, focus. Must be the glare. All the text came out really nice. Uh, some of the traces are a little thin. Not thin, but a little how you doing. So, we'll patch that up. That's not a problem. I was really more worried about the tax, really. Uh, so, I'm going to go rinse this off in water real quick just to stop the development process. Alright, so this is what we got. You see the text came out really nice right here, up here. You see the words LED there. And our voltage inputs here. It came out real nice. We got our buddy here. And uh, let's see, we got some we got some lifting off of here. A little bit in here. I don't know what happened there. Alright. 
we can fix that. I'll show you how to do that. And then uh, this will go in the uh, the tank. Let's see. Where's my Sharpie at? We'll do that. And uh, tried and true Sharpie. You can't beat it. And uh, yeah, this will be ready. I'm going to drill a, uh, a hole up here so I can have an attachment so I can uh, dip and etch the board. And after I patch this up, I won't go over that. It's pretty self-explanatory. So, uh, next step will be etching it. I'm just gonna drill the uh, the hole here. Where's my glasses? I drill a uh, a hole for the uh, so I have a place to uh, to work. So you know what? I'm gonna leave that there, and I'm gonna put a, uh, a hole right here. See this? It holds dead center, so I can use this as a marker now for when we do the other side of the board. Uh, what we need to do now, uh, just to do this one side at a time, uh, I'm gonna. Uh, cover this with some tape and uh, and then expose this side of the board. I might even cover this portion up here just to uh, shorten etching time. Here we go, we're just going to dip it right in here. And we etch. Uh, I'm using cuprochloric acid. That's the type of acid I use to etch with. It's uh, make it at home. Uh, it works really well. Uh, I've actually been using this exact same batch for uh, over four years now. And uh, yeah, all you have to do is add air to it. So I have that and a stir rod whenever I need to uh, speed it up a little bit. Uh, yeah, the text came out good. I got a little carried away with the Sharpie, but no harm done. No harm done. So let's take this, uh, the tape off. Make sure that everything is good. And uh, I'm going to leave the uh, this coating on until uh, after we're done with both sides. There's no use in putting more work into something that, you know, let's see, let's clean the back of the board. It shouldn't have any acid residue on here. We do have a little bit right here in the corner, right where the hole was. We can clean that up. And uh, this is the part of the board that doesn't count either, remember that. But a little bit of this, it'll bring it right back. It'll be a little thinner there. But even if we had to use that side of the board, see that? We'd be fine. The circuit wouldn't know any better. All right, so let's work with that. Let's see. Yeah, so let's get the back of the board going. Let's work on toner transfer. All right, toner transfer time. I've already printed out the, my artwork for the reverse side. Uh, let's see here. Where do we want this? Just like that. So I'm going to line these up using the uh, the points that we that we had printed out. Remember the uh, the alignment. Uh, let's see. I set the iron from a two, so I'm going to change that from two to four. On this particular iron, I found that those those settings work really well. Okay, so we're going to wait for that to heat up, and I'll see you in a minute. All right, I've done the alignment on the board to the uh, to the transfer. Uh, iron's heated up, so let's plop that down just like that. Um, I use a special kind of paper. Uh, I found some paper that works well and doesn't work well. I found. Uh, Let's see, and I'll give you a snapshot of that right now. It's from Staples. Uh, works really well. 
I've used magazine paper, I've used all kinds of stuff. I experimented with it for a long time. And uh, this would be the paper, if I, would, if I had to use this choice, this would be the paper I would use. Okay, we should be done with that. Uh, what I like to do is immediately throw this in water. So that's what I'm going to do right now. This is what we came back with. I'm still soaking wet here. We got one spot there that we can touch up. And uh, you can see the hole here. It's a little out. I don't know how that happened, but yeah, I think we'll be okay. I think we'll I think we'll be close enough. And uh, and when I had this face down on the paper, it lifted some of the uh, some of that up. So I'm definitely gonna after I completely dry this thing, uh, I'll tape up this side, of course, and I'll tape up this side again, just like we did last time. And we'd be able to cut this off and actually use it for another board for something else. So. You know, any kind of scrap, we can reuse that. Don't be wasteful. Reuse your stuff. So let's try this up. And we'll see what we got. Alright, so we got her all taped up. I'm already, I cleaned up the uh, the two spots here. Um, yeah, this side came out really well. But uh, the thing is with toner is when you when you're heating it up and squishing it down with the iron like that it spreads so text won't come out that well and if you have really thin traces and you're doing jumpers with uh, with resistors anything like that uh, anything where real precision comes into play you're gonna want to use the other method but this does work and uh, it does work it's tried and true but it's not the most professional way of doing it all right might want to wear gloves. That's a nice chemical burn right there. Anyway, now we're all done etching the uh, the reverse end. Let's take it apart and we'll put it up to the light and we'll see if we uh, if everything lines up. All right, so we're ripping the uh, back of the tape off here. Everything looks good on this end. We started chomping through on the uh, right in here but that's okay we're not using that Let's see if we I don't know if you got if you'll be able to see that Can you see how the holes line right up well that is what we're looking for Yeah. All right. Well, now we can take all the uh, the protective coatings off, and uh, we can really see what we have. So let's do that. Let's see. To get some of this uh, this layer off, uh, you can use naphtha. Naphtha works really well. It gets gummy and it leaves, uh, and you got to dispose of it. I like to just. Use a Brillo pad here and just, it comes right up. I've never seen it hurt a board. It makes quick work of it and you're not having to deal with any major chemicals. If I was going on a larger scale, I would not do this. This would totally be done with chemicals. If I was doing more than one board, like say if I was doing a hundred of them, yeah, it's chemicals all the way. The same thing works really well with the uh, with the toner side. Okay, here's the toner side. You can see the edges aren't as crisp as they are over here. OK, 
Okay, so that's how you can make circuit boards at home. You can fabricate them, you can manufacture them yourself. Uh, you can get pretty damn professional results out of it. Uh, it just takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of patience. You can get it, it can be done, and you can do it too. So, uh, thanks for watching. Good night, ladies and germs.